This is actually living in Vanuatu. Early starts in the morning are usually the best to make the most of every beautiful day we have. We frequently get beautiful days like this with sunny weather and the perfect conditions to go snorkeling or freediving. On this morning freediving, I was joined by my friend Andrina, who I actually met on the plane. Just so you are not fooled, we do get stormy overcast grey days. Every tropical paradise have their fair share of tropical cyclones. I will now take you on a somewhat typical day living in Vanuatu. Today we are collecting natangura or roof thatching. We make a fuel stop where a near Vanuatu lady fills up the car for us. We are driving on the ring road, which like many around the island, has potholes like mines scattered across the road. So if you see cars and buses swerving, just know they are not drunk, just dodging potholes. We arrive to collect the Natangura, which gets loaded into our truck. On this particular day, we stopped at Banana Bay on the way back for lunch. On another day, Mum and I take a morning to the main markets in town. Sometimes locals can be playing live music or preaching, like today. This is the largest fresh food market. All produce is organic, locally grown and compared to Australia, cheaply priced. However, the type of produce can vary throughout the year as fruit and vegetables are seasonally grown. You can clearly tell it's cucumber season now. We just went to the markets and there's um, people preaching which is really great to see. Um, one of the um, men who were preaching came to spoke to mom but we're already Christian <laughs> and they invited us to church but we already go to a church here. But now we're walking along the foreshore. Oh, such a beautiful day. Oh yeah. This is Iririki Island, it has a resort there, casino, and over there is um, the harbour where all the yachts come in. This is the waterfront where visiting yachts can dock and have access to water and electricity. On the other side of the harbour, there's a boatyard if larger maintenance is required. Back at home, we're making lunch. This is a local food called Tuluk, which is pork stuffed manioc cooked in banana leaf in volcanic rocks. It's the afternoon of yet another day here in Vanuatu and the view in front of me is still beautiful, blue waters, clear skies, calm weather. We get these quite often during the dry season. For the rest of my video, I will be talking about some of the things we've learned about living here in Vanuatu, like the logistics, going to school, the shops and things like that, as well as some of the quirky things about this place. When my family first moved to Vanuatu at the end of 2019, 
we were staying at a place called Waves at Surfside in Pango. The location was amazing, but the house itself required some maintenance. It was a great first house to move into and adapt to living in a new country. We had many incidences with animals, such as crabs in the showers, rats in the roof, and there also hornets, cockroaches and geckos by the hundreds. While we're on the topic of animals, Vanuatu does not have any venomous land snakes or spiders like in Australia. But there are sea creatures such as the sea crate and the stonefish, which are venomous. Back to first arriving here, moving into our house had some interesting moments like carrying mattresses into the bedroom via the balcony and changing the roofing which was extremely messy. However, when there are cyclones, everywhere can get pretty trashed. But it doesn't stay like that forever. Since Vanuatu is promoted as a touristy island getaway, you might be wondering, are there any schools here and are they good? Well, I completed the last three years of high school at Port Villa International School, which teaches the Australian curriculum and provides the South Australian Certificate of Education for Year 11 and 12. I was able to graduate with a high enough ATAR to go to James Cook University, so yes, I would say it is a very good school. There is also a French school that is popular among expats and other local schools. Port Villa International School was a great experience for me and provided many different experiences that I wouldn't have been able to have if I was still in Australia. As for sports and recreational activities here in Vanuatu, I personally do a lot of sailing and diving. However, there is also horse riding and a sports stadium for cricket, basketball, netball, soccer, volleyball, etc. And there are other water activities such as boating, fishing and surfing. Some other differences to living in Vanuatu compared to Australia are the lack of large infrastructure, well-maintained roads and high speeds, good reliable healthcare, although there are doctors, dentists and paramedics here. Since many products are imported, prices can be more expensive. Furthermore, electricity is one of the most expensive here in Vanuatu. However, there are some positives such as no income tax, relaxed rules, freedom and the lack of digitalization. For my family personally, one of the reasons we moved to Vanuatu was for the warmer weather. So that's another pro. As for grocery shopping, other than the markets, we have All Bon Marche, which have five branches around the island and is the equivalent of Woolworths in Australia. And instead of Bunnings, we have Port Villa Hardware, not forgetting to mention they even do the sausage sizzle. of my actually living in Vanuatu video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you some insight on what it's really like living here. As you can see, Vanuatu definitely has its perks like a beautiful beach behind me, but it can also have some negative aspects that I've addressed. Over the month that I'm back in Vanuatu, I've been filming a lot of underwater footage, so stay tuned for those videos coming out and see you then.